All right, so welcome everybody to Wi-Fi Wednesdays. My name is Kevin Z, founder and CEO of My Wi-Fi Networks. And today I got some really cool stuff to share with you. Not only am I going to go through some of the previous stuff that we've covered and released recently, but I have uh, a new automation tool lined up and also new legal terms that'll make your life really easy and more compliant when it comes to having public users connect to so a new terms of service, a new privacy policy for guest Wi-Fi users done by our lawyers here, very expensive for you guys to have. Uh, obviously, it's not legal advice in any way. We always recommend you consult a local counsel or lawyer in your state or country. Make sure that you have your local laws in place. But we will give you our content you can use as a template to edit and move forward. It is applicable uh, for global use, uh, and you'll see it in a second. And we also made that dynamic. So now when you want to uh, offer it to your public users, it'll have your company name automatically put in your support email and or link automatically injected in so everything's done for you and no mention of my wi-fi anywhere on the platforms okay so first let's just get started on stuff that we've uh, covered previously so uh just you know recap from last week last few weeks we had our inactive automation tool so the ability for you to uh send a message or an sms or a trigger to somebody who has not been at a location for x amount of time so that trigger is the inactive trigger. You can use it to say, hey, it's been a while. We want you back. Buy one, get one free. Service reminders for haircuts, oil changes, chiros, or dentists. Uh, we also have unbranded white pack and slips right now for the SH-100s. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's the device you got. So when you order these in the mail, um, it says right over here, as you see, social powered Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, what you'll get also in the box is a packing slip that has that in there. Now, a lot of our partners actually take their sticker and they put their sticker over here for branding. Uh, sometimes they even cover this up as well if they want. Uh, up to you. I know Craig is big on the branding and some other guys as well. Uh, but that's definitely something that we've added last little bit. Uh, we have our new branding templates. We have our CRM lead notes. Um, we also, this is just the slides from last week to show you guys. We did our new quick report read only. So when you give access to your clients and you want them to access the quick report that shows your dashboard, your contacts, your timeline, things like that, you can choose read only will eliminate the edit button. Uh, let me just show you actually where that is right over here. So if you go read only on the sub user, what that's going to do um, is let me just pull it up here. So I'll just show you actually one of our users here. And part of me, just give me one sec. I want to make sure that I have this new filter lined up because I'm going to show you guys, actually, I'm going to give you guys a tease today of, of some of the stuff that we can do inside the dashboard natively. And I'm just looking for this plugin that I had, which seems to have disappeared. Uh, apologies, guys. Give me just one sec to find this. Oh, there it is, it's hidden on the top. Cool, so actually what this is, I can share this with you guys if you want. Um, what this is is a little Chrome plugin, which blurs out the names, the emails, any sensitive information about a client when I'm showing you this. This is live data, um, but it's actually blocking out the name, the email, um, and all the sensitive stuff. So if you wanted to actually jump into your live dashboard and show your clients a view, um, of what a live client looks like without compromising the name of the clients um, or the, um, you know, over here, the uh, emails or any of the public information, private information that is available to the clients. Um, it's a little tool that just blurs the CSS so that you can't, uh, you can't see it. So it's a really cool tool. Um, I'll share this with you guys if you want in the group later. It's just a little Chrome plugin where we apply some CSS filters. Uh, a little bit technical for some, but basically what this quick report read only is, is we eliminate this edit button. So here, as you see, you can go in and edit the campaign. This is a, a live uh, view of a live uh, uh, dashboard over here. So over here, you can go edit it and change it. But however, you don't sometimes want your clients to do this. So read only allows you to remove that edit button and not allow your clients to change anything. We also added new footer branding. So you can have your logo, your support contact, and your, and your uh, footer text on the bottom of here so on modify footer. So here again, you can find that right in the platform uh, over here under branding and modify footer. And then as well, as we go forward, we can also have a review template. I might as well just stay in this view over here to show you guys how all this works. So if uh, the preview template, you go back to your main dashboard and what you do is you create a campaign with all the standard uh, content or anything you want to have for your templates and your preview pages or any new campaign that you create through a preview. You simply make a campaign that has your standard footer, your standard layout, anything you want to have standard, your colors, stuff like that. And then under branding, 
you can choose your default template uh, from over here. You'll see it in your sections over here. Let me just uh, log in actually as a white label. I can show you where that is. So over here as a white label, you can jump into branding and you'll see down here a preview template. You can choose what template or what campaign you wanna use to be your basis for your design, for your legal, for your Facebook apps, for anything like that. You set it a default campaign, you can apply it right over there. So as you saw at our footer text, you can also block users, you can whitelist and blacklist users. We also launched the content filter, the DNS content filter. So I'm not gonna go through exactly what this does. Again, you can watch the previous weeks if you wanna catch up on that. But basically it enables all kinds of protections for guest users who are using Wi-Fi at your client locations and helps keep them compliant and helps protect them from anything that users do on their site that they don't really want to happen. So it blocks pages that are not compliant, that are you know porn, weapons, drugs, things like that. And you do not want it at a family restaurant. And all of this is built in to our SH100 device. 49 bucks includes the DNS filter in beta mode right now. Uh, that's automatically enabled. So right now when you get it, I see a lot of people still have not enabled it. So here's what you need to do. Number one, you need to upgrade your device. So go look, if your SH100 has the yellow tag over there, click on upgrade available, click on that, and then click on uh, upgrade, you'll see the automatic upgrade. Now in some cases, if it says manual upgrade, follow the instructions, we covered this previously. If you have a question, you can contact support on this one. Uh, but basically it's a manual upgrade, two minute process only for those that are noted. 99% of you are going to have the automatic upgrade option, in which case you just click upgrade within five minutes, you are all good. And then after you do that, up and that, do that by I mean is upgrade your SH100 and have it at the latest version. Then you go into your locations page. So under locations, options, you'll see a content filter section. You click on and click save. If for whatever reason you see red text that says, hey, you're not compatible, one of two things. Either you're trying to enable the DNS filter on a non-SH100 location, so a location that does not have uh, an updated SH100, or your SH100 is not updated yet. So that is what you need to do to update the content filter. And also we recapped last week, the 30 day Wi-Fi challenge. So I encourage you, uh, those who do not do that, uh, or we are, I'm gonna actually tease you guys, but we are gonna be launching the 90 day Wi-Fi challenge very shortly, starting on January 1st, beginning of January. So those who have done the 30 day Wi-Fi challenge, kudos to you. If you have not watched last week's uh, video, uh, last week's Wi-Fi Wednesday is probably the last half of it. I go through the 30 day Wi-Fi challenge or what that's all about, but also stay tuned shortly because in the new year, new resolutions and planning for 2018, we're gonna be launching our 90 day Wi-Fi challenge out of the gate. So keep an eye out for that uh, surprise webinar happening Friday, not a surprise anymore, but uh, you guys will see more on that very soon. So the sales process again is qualify, show and sell and upsell. Uh, we go through all of that stuff. So again, make sure if you missed that, uh, you catch up on it. Here are the new things for this week. So huge announcement. This, you know, I had one little picture. I shared this picture inside the Facebook group I do not want to uh, undervalue what this is. So what this will do is if you enable this in automations and I'll run through this step-by-step step in a minute, what you do is enable this with a trigger of birthday. Then anyone that connects and anyone that you have their actual birthday, so you don't need the year for this to work, you just need the month and the day. So January 15th or August 20th or whatever it is, you can capture this birthday in one of two ways. Number one, you could use Facebook. So if the person has their birthday on Facebook, and many people do, I know that I do, I don't have my year because I don't want people knowing how old I am, but I do have my birthday. So my birthday is listed on Facebook. If I connect with Facebook, I can get that. In order to do that though, I'm going to go to support. I'm going to search for birthday and I'll see the one result, how to enable Facebook birthday scopes. So what a scope is and when you're creating your own custom Facebook apps, you, are, you have the ability to ask for different information. The standard information that you get through Facebook is name, email, profile picture, gender, stuff like that. Additional stuff are things like birthday. So what you need to do is follow these instructions inside your app, go to review, add user birthday scope, follow these instructions. It's very easy to do. I even give you a video in which you update or upload when Facebook says, hey, what are you guys doing here? Um, a little video that you can use to send to Facebook and say, hey, this is what we're doing. You'll get approved within two to three days and then you'll be capturing birthdays. Another way to do this is through the manual form. So in the browser here, let me just open up the campaign builder. And here I will add a new campaign. And what I wanna do is on the login options, 
under email login, I choose date of birth. Okay, that's it. Here you'll see date of birth. When somebody enters their email, date of birth, you can add other things here like name, things like that. Um, it will automatically capture that, save it. And then what happens is on that person's birthday, every year, only the next time, like their next birthday, only one time, or only after they visit it five times and it's their birthday, do you want to send them something? Some companies or you know, businesses might not want to send somebody a birthday you know, gift or, or offer if they've only been there one time. Maybe you want to send it to your best customers, customers that have been there three times, five times, seven times, then you can trigger a birthday message. So here's where you find this new birthday automation. It's inside integrations. Oh, sorry, it's inside automations. I meant to say you don't need to set up a new integration for this. All you need is your Facebook app added with the birthday scope. Okay, once you have that, you go new automation. You'll notice under trigger, we have the two new options that we've had, the inactive. So if somebody does not come back in X amount of time, that's where that lives. But also birthday is new. So trigger on somebody's birthday every time. I recommend really every time anybody comes, you just send them back. Even a happy birthday note, it doesn't have to be something free. It could just simply be, hey, us at Bagel World want to wish you a happy birthday or us at this pizza place just want to wish you a happy birthday because you came in one time and you used Wi-Fi. Like it's really nice. Um, to get that message every time everybody loves their birthday and loves getting a, a happy birthday message so all you do is do that and then over here you choose what action you want to have so here if you want to send a birthday message directly uh, you go here you can drag the message happy birthday um, you can actually I don't really spend a lot of time in, in reviewing this this filter here or what you can do here but I can add an image here I can browse okay uh, if I don't have any images I can search free photos I can just open up one of my file folder let me just go back to, uh, you can create your own folders here. So what you want to do here is create your own folder. I have my folder over here. I can search free photos and I can search for birthday. Oh. My typing is not on today. So searching for birthday, I see I have a lot of options here that I can use some pretty nice stuff. Let me import this one. Uh, and then with this graphic, I can also edit it. I can mask it. I can put some different filters on it. So you can do this for your clients. And every time you set one of these things up, it really is something that you can charge for. So now that I have this image, I can edit the image. Um, like I said, I don't really spend too much time on this. So I might just do this for just a couple minutes here and show you how I can really change this. I can add like an Instagram style filter uh, on here. I can also, let's go back. I can also do an overlay. So let's say I just wanted to cut this and make it more of a circle. Uh, and make it even a smaller circle or focus just on the girl and the cake. Apply that, save. And it's a black mask. I can obviously make it white on white. But once this is all done, this is all done through Adobe Creative Cloud. So all that's inside. Um, it's inside my graphic. It's all mobile optimized. It's really neat. I can choose the center name, email, subject. I can write happy birthday, whatever I want. And this is sent either through our servers or through your own mail servers. Now, not only that, I mean, the message is really all you need to set up for a happy birthday message. I recommend doing it through here. Um, if you want to do it through MailChimp, you want to do it through Constant Contact, through Eye Contact, all this will do is trigger a, 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 a basically trigger something to send that data to MailChimp or to Eye Contact when it's somebody's birthday. So recommend if you're going to do this, you make a different list inside Eye Contact or MailChimp or whatever your CRM is or email provider is, call it birthday notifications. And then when it's somebody's birthday, always or one time, they'll be added to here. Uh, and then from there, you can trigger that message automatically through MailChimp or through your, through your own mail server. So that is the birthday automation. Pretty simple, but highly effective. Huge value. Something you can sell to your clients immediately. Now, another thing we added, like I mentioned, is the dynamic legal terms. So how does this work? What you want to do is, number one, go into your branding section. And you're going to notice there are two new areas over here. Okay, there's legal company name and support link. So this is your legal company name and your support link to your business. So here I'm going to do Acme Agency Inc., for example, and support is support at acme.com. This is just a demo, obviously, to show you guys. But once you enter your company name and support link inside your branding section and click on save, you're going to notice a few things. So number one, on the bottom here, we have a new system license agreement. So give this a read. This is a new agreement that lists everything you can and can't do with the platform. It is well done. And if you'll notice right away, when your clients log in, it has your branding. So Acme Knowledge Repository talks about um, your platform, uh, talks about 
you know, how, what an access point is, how you can connect to it, how you, you know, use everything. It's very good. It's very well encompassing and it has all automatically been generated now with your legal name. You'll notice right at the top, this agreement is between Acme Agency Inc. and you, the channel partner. So you can take this and when your clients log in and when they go through and read this, it is actually your terms. You can override this always if you want. Um, obviously, you can go right over here. Let me just go back to branding. You can edit your content over here, edit your terms, but this has already been injected. Uh, this has ours. You can change this. The dynamic version physically changes your branding and company name uh, over here by whatever you enter over here. So that's number one, terms and conditions on the system license agreement on the bottom. But in addition, more importantly, I should say, um, anytime you do a preview or anytime you have your, your actual landing pages for your clients, uh, let's open up one of these ones. So if I look at these terms now, you're going to notice that these are new guest Wi-Fi terms. Now, these are all encompassing. This has been redone to reflect how our platform works now, all the data that we get, all the messages that you send. You know, A lot of people were always worried, do we have proper terms? Do we have legal? Our legal and terms have always been good. We had a great lawyer do. We actually had Facebook's lawyer originally do our terms of service and legal. But as things go forward and as things change, we felt it was necessary for us to go call uh, new lawyers and have our uh, updated firm go through all of this. So all this is new. All this is now up to date inside the dashboard. And you'll see for, uh, for guest users, they're going to see your company name on demos, on all your setups, on anything you do. You can always, again, override these inside the campaign builder. You can edit your custom terms and privacy. But this talks about the services, how you register, code of conduct, what you can and cannot do. Talks about pyramid schemes, you know, all this funky stuff uh, that you cannot do, obviously, on a website. Talks about contests. So we might offer you, uh, enter you into a contest. If you don't agree, don't uh, log on to the Wi-Fi. Links and advertisements. Talks about disclaimers, the limitation of liability, which is important both for you and your business owners. This is also a, something that you can take to your clients and say, look, we have really solid Wi-Fi terms and we force people to accept these terms right over here. They have to click accept before they log in. Right, So that protects you, Mr. Business Owner, because right now you have nothing. So this is also really good, and you can show this to them, obviously. And you talk about indemnity, so they can't come after you. They can't sue you. Talk about privacy, changes and termination. You have the right to do and change this and terminate this if you want to. Uh, they have to respect your trademarks. They have to abide by laws. Um, and then it goes right into a privacy policy, specifically the information, how we use, what we take, how we collect it. So once you connect, you sign up and receive newsletters, other promotional contacts, and you get contact with a common question or complaint. So this talks, this is hyper-focused on free Wi-Fi, guest Wi-Fi in a public environment. So it talks about the Wi-Fi service, what we get, how you can connect, the different information that we capture, the different materials, the messages, promotional materials that we might uh, target you with, the different contests and promotions. We talk about cooking you as a user, survey, customer research, um, disclosure of personal information. We have the right to share it if we want to. This is for you guys, again, remember to share this to your clients. This protects you. Along the way, anybody that's connecting or, or using your guest Wi-Fi can use this. And the best thing is uh, all of your information has been injected here. So if you see any questions about this privacy policy, it should be directed to support at acme.com, which is your support URL. So nothing to change here out of the gate. Everything is all done for you, all dynamic. Um, this looks simple, not so easy. So we did it, took some time, but now it's done. This was by request. So I uh, hope you guys love that. Uh, and that is right now live in the dashboard. Both the new terms and the privacy policy are all now dynamic listed over there. So um, on that note, if those of you who are dropping off now, I just want to wish everybody a very happy holiday season. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. All that stuff. I mean, we'll be, get a chance to say Happy New Year next week. But Merry Christmas. If I don't talk to you guys in the Facebook group, Happy Holidays. Uh, and if you guys have any questions now, I'll be happy to answer them live. Um, I do have some surprise webinars coming up in the next couple of days. So Keep an eye out for those. I don't want to ruin what they are all about. All I have to say is make sure you check your email uh, and stay tuned because I got some really wicked stuff. If you're looking to really grind it and turn it up in 2018, uh, make sure you pay attention because we're going to be teaching you guys some pretty awesome strategies. So that being said, any questions I can answer right now? I see a couple have come through, but any additional ones I'll be happy to get to right away. So David's asking, can they enter birthday as month and day only using the email form? Um, yeah, David, we're actually looking at instead of entering your day, month, year with slashes, we're thinking about drop downs. So drop down month, drop down day, drop down year, and then you'll have the option to ask or not ask for the year. 
So that's what we're thinking about changing on that. So that's what we're looking to do. Darcy is uh, asking, will it send on that person's actual birthday or can you schedule it to send a week before? Um, yeah, Darcy, we can do like a reverse delay or kind of like, kind of, you know, make it early. Uh, we can look at changing that, but right now it actually sends it on that person's actual birthday. So on that birthday, anytime during business hours, generally like nine to five in the time zone of the user is when that person will receive that message. So David, also same question here, the ability to trigger it in advance. Yeah, we can look at adding that birthday um, delay. Just wrote that down. That's a great, great idea. Another uh, person's asking, do you recommend creating a new app for each client? Now, it all really depends on how important the brand is to your client. If you want to do some Facebook ads, you want to do, uh, you know, connecting with that brand, setting up a custom Facebook app takes about five minutes. Very easy to do. So, yeah, if you have the time, you want to set it up, recommend doing that. Separately, if you're creating a network and you have your one brand, like it's Acme Wi-Fi, and you're going to all these businesses and you're selling it as Acme Wi-Fi and everything is there, then you can kind of use the same app because people know your brand. They see your brand as the service. So then you can kind of just set up one Facebook app and then use that. However, if you're targeting a chain or a business owner that is all about their brand, then it's worth your time. And you can also charge extra to set up a custom Facebook app for the client. All right. Any of the questions I can, uh, I can answer right now. Give you guys a couple of seconds to get those in. Also make sure if you're asking questions, uh, ask them inside the Q and a function in zoom. It allows me to answer them much easier. So Darcy, uh, if you need some help upgrading your SH-100, contact support, we'll be happy to walk you through it. Michael wants to know, can you be notified when a person is at your premises on their birthday? That's a good idea. We can look at adding that trigger, uh, definitely. However, um, I mean, you'll know if it's their birthday because they'll be celebrating their birthday at the table. I'm not sure what kind of value there is there. I guess it's just a conversion uh, mechanism. Uh, we can look at, yeah, if somebody gets converted, i.e. I e. actually comes and connects on their birthday. Um, yeah, we can add that perhaps down the road. Steve's asking if there's snow on my porch. Uh, yeah, there was a couple days ago, but it melted. Uh, yeah, not too exciting, but there probably will be more snow on the ground shortly because we live up here in Canada. All right, so I'm just going to take another look at the view, see if anybody has um, other questions. All right, I got a question here from Brad, and he's saying he's getting emails from Facebook about URIs. Yes, a lot of you guys have received those emails. Nothing to change. You don't need to change anything at all. Um, that is more for services or third parties that access Facebook's API using a different domain than the domain you use. We only hit Facebook's API one time. The time that that person connects is the time that our system calls Facebook and says, hey, we want to validate this person's information, send us their details. Facebook responds with that data. That's the only time we hit it, and the URI that you've set as your white label domain is the domain that is actually reaching out to Facebook. So that is valid and compliant, nothing to change. That was instituted by Facebook because sometimes they would validate on you know, URL one and then in the background, URL two would use that same key and keep hitting up Facebook for information. We don't do that at all. So nothing to worry about on that Facebook email if you received it for the 90 day URI thing, uh, no action that you need to take at all. Damon's wondering in the campaign setup, is there a way to add HTML source code in the thank you page? Um, yeah, we could look at that. The reason we disabled it is because to be honest, that uh, thank you page shows up in a captive portal pop-up. That's not like a browser. It's a captive portal pop-up. So it limits cookies. You can't run JavaScript. You can't do a lot of things that you might be wanting to do. So Damon, let me know what you're trying to do on that thank you page. Maybe there's another way to accomplish it or maybe we can open it up for you. But really from what, from what we've seen, 
The only uh, HTML source code that people are popping in are things that probably will not work inside a Captain Portal pop-up. That's a limitation of uh, operating system. So iOS and Android just simply will not run JavaScript or cookies or anything inside a Captain Portal. That's why we do things the way we do them. Um, but let me know if there's something specifically that you want to do, uh, and we can help you out with that. Uh, you can go to chat support, support.mywifi.io, and just start a conversation with me and let me know exactly what you want to, uh, to do there. All right, guys. Well, uh, I think that is it. So on that note, I want to wish you guys a happy holidays again. Uh, Merry Christmas uh, and, you know, happy holidays to whatever holiday you celebrate. And uh, I want to see you guys on the other side. Make sure you keep uh, an eye out. We have some special holiday greeting email slash surprises coming up for some cool training and opportunities coming up in the next week or so pre New Year's. So keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the Facebook group. Thank you so much for joining us live, and I will see you there. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.